Hey folks, it's John P. from Geek Beat TV, and you're actually looking at me through a speaker. I have two words for you. Martin Logan. This episode of Geek Beat TV is brought to you by Netflix. Folks, I am here with Dennis from Martin Logan. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Listen, I've got to say, you know, we're supposed to maintain some journalistic integrity here, but I have none when it comes to Martin Logan. These are absolutely my favorite speakers on earth, bar none. Man of good taste. Thank you very much. Now, the, the problem is a lot of people don't know what Martin Logans are, and more generally speaking, why is it that people can see me through a speaker. So can you tell us a little bit about the technology that goes into these speakers? Sure, be happy to. Uh, the reason you can see through this is, this is basically a sandwich. You've got front and back stators, these stationary panels uh, made of perforated steel that are coated. But the see-through element is the key element. That's the, the diaphragm, the thin film, that vibrates and pushes the air against your eardrums, makes music. This is all about harnessing the world of charged particles. Uh, that means that, as we all know, opposites uh, attract and likes repel, kind of like dating. OK, so um, wh what happens with electrostatic speakers is you bring in electricity from the wall, you go through a little power supply, and you make sure there's only voltage there. And you keep a steady charge on this thin film that's sandwiched in here. Now, the music signal comes in, goes through a step-up transformer, and that signal creates positive on one side, negative on the other, and it's constantly switching back and forth as the music changes. And that's what pushes and pulls the film back and forth. We would normally, with a normal speaker technology, they'd be applying that to a voice coil, which would be pushing a cone in and out, right? Precisely. But in this case, we're going to push this entire film the, from top to bottom, side to side. The whole thing is going to vibrate the way one of those speakers would. Correct. And if we use the concept of these, these are the features of it, let's talk about the benefits. Benefits. Because what happens is number one benefit with electrostats are that the film itself weighs almost nothing, far less than a tweeter, a cone, a dome. Number two benefit, and you, you just spoke about that, is it's uniformly driven. The entire surface moves in those millisecond accuracies back and forth, which is, again, more linear and accurate than any cone can be. And lastly, and this is critical, there's no need for a crossover network right where your ears are at the best. So, so many advantages to electrostatic, and I would humbly say that Martin Logan's contribution has been to improve many of the limitations that had come before us. For instance, if you notice the curvature here, this is a design patent we, we got, and what that allowed us to do was expand the uh, dispersion of the sound to what we feel is an ideal degree, which is 30 degrees. So it's enough to put the sound where the listener is sitting, but not so much that it reacts too quickly with walls ceilings and floors. So the controlled dispersion that we've created literally takes the room out of the equation. And I think all of us music lovers know uh, that the room can be pretty troublesome when you're trying to get an ideal playback. Time to thank the people who pay the bills around here. Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring this episode. I love Netflix and it's one of the reasons that I love having them as a sponsor. I've been catching up on Star Trek Next Generation through Netflix on different devices. Sometimes it's on at home on my TV, sometimes it's on my iOS device out and about. And you can do the same. Go to netflix.com slash geekbeat for your free trial. If you haven't tried it yet, you are missing out. I can't say that enough. Netflix.com slash geekbeat. It is a limited time offer. Go now. So another big benefit that Martin Logan's uh, been known for has been what we call the hybrid design. And if you, if you come down, you'll notice that, that we have this nice curvilinear stat panel, which handles from the beyond your hearing high frequencies down into the bass area. But having full deep bass from an electrostatic panel would make it larger and harder to drive. So we have uh, 
figured out a way to get a very small cabinet and to use a conventional woofer and with our engineering have a very fine crossover network that makes a very seamless transition between the panel and the woofer. And in, in this case with this loudspeaker, the Montis, this is quite an achievement. Our, our next latest generation is a 24-bit digital base uh, crossover. Uh, our engineers have been able to model the cabinet, the woofer, the acoustic environment and, and get an even more still seamless match between the stat panel, which is a dipole radiator. That means the sound comes out the back and front, so it has its own style of acoustic launch into the room and a conventional woofer, albeit a very good one and one that's in a very small cabinet, which also contains a 200 watt amplifier. So basically what we're doing is we're going to use the subwoofer in the bottom to recreate the very low frequencies and we're going to let the electrostat panel do all the mid-range and all the high frequencies. And one one thing I've noticed, and we have not yet taken a listen to these brand new Montes series speakers, I'm, I'm anxious to do so, but one, one thing I've noticed with other Martin Logans is that no matter where you listen, where you put your ear, you always hear the tweeter sounds and you always hear the mid-range. It comes from everywhere and it goes everywhere, so it's it's more you, you know omnidirectional as opposed to just being unidirectional. Uh, yes, that's true. I think a very useful example of what you just said would be to think of this as the reverse of a microphone. It's the, it's the, the microphone begins uh, the sound, the re uh, capturing of sound process, and it's very much like a electrostatic. In fact, most professional microphones in the music world are electrostats. There's one diaphragm here. You don't have a tweeter and a mid-range and a woofer. Once the, 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 the full sound wave is captured, it's stored and it eventually when it replays back here, it's like replaying the microphone. And, and as you said, it launches it into the room in a seamless fashion. You, you stop thinking about where the highs are coming from, where the mids are coming from, which is actually a distortion of music that the box industry has uh, made us think like that, when really music doesn't arrive in parcels. It arrives in a complex wave, millisecond by millisecond. And then your ear, another single diaphragm, we don't have a two-ear and a mid-range, um, uh, decodes with your brain and tells you you're hearing music. That is a very good point. Usually, you know, when we hear things in the real world, we just hear them. They're not sectioned off. So thank you very much for that description of how the electrostats work. I want to hear them. Let's take a listen. All right. <laughs> Okay, folks, we were just taking a listen to the brand new Montes speakers inside. I, I wish you could be here. I wish you could experience them. There's really nothing like a nice pair of electrostats. Anyway, these new Montes, they actually have a powered subwoofer. It's a 200 watt amplifier in that bad boy. And these go for 10,000 a pair, 99, 95. I highly recommend you pick one up if you have the means. If that's a little bit tight on the budget, no problem. Martin Lute, Logan's still got you covered with two other pairs here. You've got the Theos, which is kind of an intermediate line. These are gonna go for half the price, 5,000, but the subwoofer is not powered. So you need to make sure you've got a big amp that you're gonna be able to drive it with. And then finally, we've also got the Electromotion ESLs, and these little bad boys will go for 2,200. And the nice thing here, again, these are this is a non-powered subwoofer, but you can actually get a good view. You can take the grill off and you can get a view of that um, eight inch woofer that's built into the bottom here. So uh, $2,200 for an introductory. I tell you right now, a $2,200 pair of these is going to sound better than about anything that you could possibly get. So that's it from the Martin Logan booth. Great stuff with the electrostats. You guys stay tuned for more live coverage from Cedia on geekbeat.tv and also check us out on youtube.com forward slash geekbeat.tv. Take care.